We'll go ahead and start this match at one and a half speed. We have two more undefeated players here. You see on the right side, Michael Hamilton, three-time SCG Invitational Top 8 competitor, taking on Fano Black, and it's it's the marquee matchup here. It's it's Bravo versus Prism. By the way, i got to say something here. Fano Black is one hell of a name. Absolutely. He's, he sounds like the, the enemy in some kind of like anime show or something like that. Like He's the in-boss that, that you have to get through. Love this name. Yeah. Maybe at the end of, if you're like Tannen's age, Thundercats or like Silverhawks, oh. one, one of those cartoons. What's so, I don't know what Silverhawks is. That one's above me. Oh, Silverhawks has a banger of a theme song. You should check that one out. I'm actually older than Tannen. That's the problem with me yeah. ribbing on him for this. At any point, it just could be turned on me. So yep. I was going to let you have it. Mm, all right. That's all right. I don't now, really deserve it. All right. Shield check. We've got the ice shield. We've got time skippers. Everything else kind of normal yep. that we've got going on here. We have about a normal equipment, it looks like, over here, but we do have the skull cap, so we're going on, like, the really defensive version of Prism, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, we also have uh, the Iron Rots up there as well, ready to do some more blocking. So definitely a more defensive approach from this Prism. Let's see if Fano can get the ball rolling here. Starts off with a parable of humility for his, one of his first auras of the game. A couple going into the pitch zone here as well. Starting out with what you're supposed to do in this matchup if you want to win with it as Prism, and, and what is generally the idea Prism has to do to, to beat this Bravo? Uh, you're looking at it. You have to get as wide as possible. If Bravo has a flaw, it's that it's very reliant on RNG for its go-again effect. And in general, even if you go ahead and spike that fuse, you're investing a lot of resources into whatever you're benefiting uh, with that ability. So it's hard to pressure those auras. A lot of decks have been changing to adapt to that. Some of that is lead the charge. Some of it is these time skippers we see. Uh, Blink is another way that they can potentially do it. But it's tough. It's not the optimal Bravo turn when you have to start turning things towards the auras. And Prism just needs to jam as many onto the battlefield as it possibly can. Now, we saw an evergreen block there to pop the heralds. And I want to stop for just a second here. That's a Glacial Footsteps. Is this the more defensive version of Bravo? Give me a minute. You know what? You, I'm going to take a look at this list. Yeah, it's somewhere between the two. I don't think it's pure defensive, but there, there's a lot of D-reacts. Uh, there's also things like the aforementioned uh, Escape to the Elements, which I think is really big, and, and a few more typical Guardian attacks like Disable in the mix. So... Yeah, this doesn't doesn't look like you know the one that we had earlier today. I think it was one of the first couple rounds that we did. We had the really defensive version of Bravo Star of the Show. This one's more toward the traditional build of a little bit of spice, like you said, little things sprinkled in here or there. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. All right, tunic up to three for Fano here. Another aura added here. Going to go ahead and get in some little chip damage here. Yeah, doing the thing thus far, producing auras at a decent clip. Really no salvos from anyone. No one really looking to get all that far ahead. It looks like a Pierce Reality is going to end his turn there, so getting that second one. Uh, lead the charge. There one of the cards are really important in this matchup for this exact situation. Yeah, yeah. you want to be able to do multiple things in a turn. You see Oak and Old going to come down. Looks like challenging that first Merciful Retribution, I believe. Yep. yep. Looks That's like it's gone. Going to get cracked. It's going to deal a damage to Michael here, going to the soul. Then we're going to have a pitch here to activate the Winter's Whale to take, a, take out that second aura. So first real challenge presented to Michael. And you know what? He's up to it. Yeah, I think, I think he passed the test there. Didn't let Fano really start to snowball the game off of those two auras. So we'll have to see what the response is here from Black. Are there more auras in hand, or are we shifting now to some Herald pokes? Both players operating with an arsenal here. Michael threatening one of those good five-card hands here next turn. It's like a prismatic shield on the side of Fano that's going to go ahead and make some of those uh, spectral shields. Yep, looks like we're going to get an attack in for three here. It does look like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and activate that Crown of Sea just to gain a life here as well. So one of those prevented, the other two presenting two damage. Let's see if Michael wants to interact with this. Doesn't look like he does. Going to go down to 36. Does Fano have anything else for us? Oh, looks like he's going to make another Spectral Shield. Getting wide onto the battlefield, becoming very difficult to defend, and a great follow-up to a wide Spectral Shield board. Shimmers of Silver, but Bravo doing its thing. Yeah, five-card hands. Very good chance of you revealing for Bravo. So there we go, three cards, three elements. Let's see what the attack is from Michael Hamilton. This is a Spinal Crush. Very nice attack from Michael. That'll go ahead and shut down that Luminaris on the next turn. 
so it won't get super wide from those auras. Possibly challenge some of those spectral shields as well. See if maybe Fano can put together some good blocks here. I, I think there may be a way where he doesn't necessarily take the brunt of the crush, given the four spectral shields, but you're not making it out with those four spectral shields, that's for sure. Yeah, let's see how much exactly he wants to take here. He wants to commit a card from his hand, or maybe try to have a bigger turn recovering from here. It could also have a soul shield. That's a, that's a possible way that this Ooh. goes a little bit better. I did get a peek at the Arsenal card for half a second. You might be right. I saw the, the orangish look. You know, the okay. It has yeah, that yeah. little more of an orange tint. That would be a big swing in Fano's favor. Having a careful think about this first block from hand. Only get one. Make it count, Fano. Kind of wish Fano was playing Kano. Am I the only one that feels that way? I, I thought you were actually saying that at first. Then I looked down, I saw that it was his name, and I was like, wait, we don't have Kano. <laughs> so it was a soul shield here, along with a card block from hand and a piece of equipment here, and that's going to... I think that full blocks here. I believe you're correct. I think we're lining up 11 there, and that's... A pretty nice exchange. Still two cards for yeah. the next turn. Turn that defense up to 11, and this is going to be a cold four coming in here from Winter's Whale. So this is going to be a frostbite on hit. Looks like there goes all the spectral shields, so you were right. They're not going to make it through this turn. That soul shield is going to go into the soul here. One aura left over. we got a card in the soul. What kind of turn can Fano have here? Yeah, spectral shields didn't go down the way I thought they would, but it was the Winter's Whale eventually cleaning it up. Still keeps the shimmers, so we'll see if anything can happen with that. It's like a haze bending, bending is yep. added to here. And it looks like we're moving to Arsenal. Would you like to use your crown of seeds? Always a question. You have to ask the Bravo player. Of course, there's an advantage to trying to set up specific fuses for Bravo. Yeah, it looks like we got a check of the Arsenal. This is the car that Michael actually wants to keep there. It looks like this is a hard decision for him. It looks like it, he think he's just keeping it. Yep. Got to keep the card in the arsenal. Got the cards from hand. These are some of the biggest decisions throughout the course of the matches. How do you manage your arsenal? When is it correct to go ahead and pop that seeds without preventing damage and using it more as a card filtering tool? Yeah, it does look like he's just wanting to get an attack in here for one of these. And I wonder if there's a blink hiding behind this. Sort of looks like it. I mean, this is this is pretty low impact. You called it correctly, Tannen. Good read. Yeah. Blink's going to come down. We're going to take care of that second aura as well. So, again, as soon as the battlefield gets wide, Michael Hamilton doing a good job shutting it back down, and just keeping parity in this game thus far. Yeah, like you said, good good job taking parity there. No Arsenal card is something worth mentioning here, and we've got a Spectral Seal and a Parable of Humility over on Fano Black's side. Still some cards and a soul as well, so starting to rebuild just a little bit. Not a lot of damage dealt yet this no, game. No, no. Fano's I'll, still at 40. Yeah, a lot of jockeying for position. It, it's strange that Fano is able to make it through those early turns so unscathed. I believe the Bravo has activated twice. You expect damage to push through in those scenarios, but has not been the case thus far. Yeah, we are down a full equipment piece, though. That's not something that can be forgotten here. Absolutely. We've, we've gotten through quite a bit of the auras as well. Yeah, those Ironhide Gauntlets, they're usually not super long for this world. They get cashed in pretty early on, I find, uh, trying to prevent some kind of on-hit or just preserve Spectral Shields. It's such a big deal when you can keep those Spectral Shields on the battlefield across multiple turns. Speaking about those Spectral Shields, we've got two of them attacking in here. We've still got that Parable of Humility, and that's a Haze Bending as well. So Fano just keeps doing it over yeah. and over again. Here, go wide, go wide, go wide. And this is why he hasn't taken any damage yet, because Michael understands the assignment for him here. Yeah, this is a big contrast to some of the other Prism games we've seen on camera thus far, where they didn't quite have this same inertia get built. They just kind of sat there and got blown up, honestly. But this time around, I think Fano doing a really nice job finding the pieces. Just keep asking Michael, what are you going to do about this? It looks like Michael's going to pitch a disable here, and he's going to go ahead and take down that haze bending. Is this going to be all of Michael's turn? We'll see if there's a yep. blank. There is not, so that's going to wrap it up. Not really a good use of resources by Michael. Not to say anything was done wrong, but this right. is just the reality when you're facing prison. It was a weak turn for sure. You definitely wanted to be having a stronger turn, especially against the board that's being here. This is one of your favorite cards. Yeah, Mirage Metamorph going to go ahead and come down. No good answers. What are you going to do, Michael? Yeah, you don't want to pop this one blocking it. It's going to make the board even harder for you to deal with now. Crown of Seeds has been active. There's a shield of one here for Michael Hamilton. This is a big salvo from Fano, really looking to go ahead and seize the initiative again. You know, if you hadn't told me that Michael was a was a uh, former Magic player, I definitely would have picked it up with the way that he uh, 
He's got the, the card flick going. Mm. The telltale sign of one, for sure. So let's see, what's he going to do this turn? It does look like he's just going to take the damage. Yeah, like you said, a card that's extremely hard to block. I think it's a six damage turn for there, and then the Spectral Shields are going to come in along with the Parable of Humility. Michael's starting to really fall low here. Yeah. I mean, usually in that scenario, you're expecting Michael to come back with something. Otherwise, you would just make some value blocks. But, oh, <laughs> I mean, no. it keeps coming for Fano. Maybe a good read from Michael. Going to go ahead and Spinal Crush on that. Crack it. Make sure there's no trouble from that Herald of Erudition. Yeah. Definitely up to the task of being able to block there. He had a ton of cards in his hands. So he had to believe that was going to come through. Herald of Erudition is one of those cards... If it ever hits, it's amazing, but in this matchup, that's almost it's never tough. happening. <laughs> Very tough. Passing Mirage going to be the last aura, and Michael's thinking about it and is going to go after the Passing Mirage. I like that decision. Passing Mirage can just be such a problem. You know, if you want to go ahead and leverage the fact that you have all these high-powered attacks in your deck to control the Phantasm aspect of the Prism deck, you, you can't let that card stick around. Right, because that card takes away Phantasm from your first Ooh, attack. And a, another big turn for Michael. Going to have the blink and be able to come in with the Autumn's Touch to control another aura. Yeah, this is why you see uh, a lot of the players in Bravo running Time Skippers. This is an extra copy of Blink yep. in their deck. Because, like, we're really seeing it here in this game, how important that kind of thing is. And this is going to be a lot of Spectral Seals after this. After Fano, there's a lot of hand gesturing here. Let's see how many he's got left over. This is six. Go again. Yeah, six shields popping in. Really tough for Michael to deal with. Yeah, no arsenal. He's going to have to just take six here. No good blocks. No way to activate a, a crown of seeds. This is, this is getting rough for Michael here. It's 40 to 16, Brian. I think it's really interesting that Michael chose to preserve the stalagmite on that turn because there, there were no resources floating, so you could have almost certainly gotten a guaranteed card out of hand if Fano wanted to continue that spectral shield onslaught. Uh, instead, let Fano both play the Shimmers of Silver and set up an arsenal. So we'll have to see how that plays out. It looks like we had a big attack from a Spinal Crush here going at Fano. I gotta believe this is actually going towards Fano and not the Aura here. I think that makes sense. If this hits for enough, uh, it will do a lot to blunt Fano's offense, taking out many of those Spectral Shields. But I expect Fano to line up a large block here. I was going to say, does Fano even really need to commit much more to the board of what's going on here? I think he just needs to make sure that his stuff stays there, right? I agree with you. Yeah, yeah in a, a very strong position. That Shimmers of Silver going to slowly increase the offense being put out by those Spectral Shields. So really incentivized to just make a huge block here. Now, you want to preserve a yellow. And that's the problem, as I see it, with where Fano sits, is how do you produce that yellow and make it go into the pitch zone? Because there's nothing in Fano's soul right now. So you can't go ahead and make a Spectral Shield. It does look like we're going to get a soul shield used here, though, so that kind of soars up that uh, thing. Good call by you. This is really important for that to happen. Now, this does get a few of the spectral shields down. We're down to four of those on Fano's turn. And this is like an instant speed Genesis as well, a card okay. that we've been singing the praises of quite a bit. Yeah, interesting approach. Choosing as opposed to pushing a little bit more damage, just going to get a little bit wider uh, on his turn. Really nothing to do here but make a singular attack. I'm assuming we'll see. Looks like he might be pumping the Shimmer's now. He's going to pump the Genesis here. Do you like pumping the Genesis there? It's an interesting decision. I, I mean, you sort of don't expect Genesis to stick around all that long. You think it's going to be the primary target. So there's part of you that wants to be like, oh, why don't I go ahead and try and disincentivize Michael from attacking this? Exactly. That's what I was However, thinking. I think given how far ahead Fano is on life, there's also a really good argument for protecting that Shimmer as well. So it looks like we have the block here to give him the Frostbite and... We'll, and the resources were used to make just another Spectral Shield. And hey, look, this is a turn that can get you back into this. We got an activation of Bravo here. Yeah, let's see what the follow up is for Michael Hamilton. Really is in need of a large turn. Yeah, let's see. What's it going to be? This is going to be a Crippling Crush with Dominate and Go Again, but just a card in the arsenal left over after this. Yeah, so unlikely to have any follow up, but this could do a lot to slow down the turn of Fano. Also, clear out those spectral shields. Let's see what kind of blocks we can get. We've used two soul shields already, so it's not likely we're going to see a third one, but always possible. Trying to see if there are any extra lightning surges in the deck here. It does look like it's just the blue lightning surges, so one of the few things that can still attack right. from this position. But Crippling Crush, maybe it's going to try to get Michael back into this game. Huge attack coming in. If he gets a crush effect, he's going to get a couple cards out of Fano's hand. Yeah, tough to get the crush effect given those spectral shields, but you're, you're going to get something good from this attack, and that's really what Michael Hamilton needed on this turn. Yeah, you're going to try to clean this up just a little bit. 
Got to make this more manageable. You can't get it all in one turn. You might as well start making inroads when you can. Uh, that's what you have to do. Oh, no. We got a big defensive reaction here. That's an unmovable. Yeah, Fano has had the defense reactions at all the right times. And that's going to hop in the way of the Crippling Crush. Like I said, still going to lose a bunch of those Spectral Shields. Still a pretty good result for the Crippling Crush. Those look like there's going to be an attack from the Hammer as well. Yeah, it had two resources floating, I'm assuming, before we head to that and use the Spring Tunic. Yep, so four-card hand along with an arsenal left over for Michael Hamilton here. Back Not over bad. to Fano Black. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Attack with the Shimmers here. Get that, get that plus one. Michael's starting to, you know, maybe claw his way back into this game. Yeah, I don't think this game is anywhere near decided. You know, you see these life totals, you have to think Michael's in a really vulnerable position, but I, I, there's still a lot of flesh and blood to be played. Yeah, a block from hand here from Michael as well. He's going to start conserving that life total a little bit. When it's attacks for two, I'm a little more inclined to block than the attacks for one. So I definitely like that block from Michael here. That's all you one of the features I love about Michael Hamilton's deck list. There's no awakenings. And look, I believe in awakening. I think it's an extremely powerful card. The reason I love it is because Michael has adapted to what the rest of his deck is doing. Very cognizant of the games he's going to play. Not trying to play awakening games with this list. And it, it takes a really smart, talented deck builder to kill those sacred cows. And to just give up on awakening, I think a lot of people would almost laugh at Michael Hamilton for doing so. But look how he's been rewarded thus far. 6-0 thus far yeah, in the calling Indianapolis. You can laugh. And he'll, he'll keep sitting here at 6-0 in Absolutely. calling. Exactly. It looks like an attack from a Spectral Seer is going to get prevented by... That seeds looks like attack with a second spectral shield shield here. Is this time to give up the ice shield? Doesn't look like it, but maybe. I think you can find a better spot for it. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna take the one. Then take one from Genesis here, down to fourteen, and another another silver. Yep, shimmers here. of silver. Follow up. It's gonna go ahead and just keep adding to the offense. But you Spe see that Bravo pull to the front. Speaking of offense, Pulse and Lightning Surge yeah, activate got, Bravo. Going to get a few attacks here. Let's see if there's any kind of big attack from Michael to start the turn off. No, there's going to be access to that Lightning Surge. Should he need a nice free way to get in and challenge that Genesis? Well, it looks like Autumn's Touch coming in for a ton of damage here. Yeah, big red Autumn's Touch. Merciful Retribution is going to come down. Looks like the damage is going to get... I think the damage is going to get taken here. Yep, two Spectral Seals. And then a little bit more damage. Yeah. Get through. So first real damage of the game for Fino Black here. Down at... Oh, let's see. What's the light total going to be at? 32. 32 to 12. There we go. Yeah, two points taken by Michael Hamilton from that... Merciful Retribution. Not at quite a low enough life total where that's terrifying, but that can't stick around long. Otherwise, M Michael doesn't play the sometimes seen Arcane Barrier in his equipment set. A lot of people will play Null Rune Gloves for specifically Merciful Retribution. Michael's got to take a different line. Can't just let that remain on the field and taking those planks from Merciful Retribution. Man, he's going to take at least a little bit more of that because he went after the Genesis there with the second attack from that Winter's Will or back over here to Fano. Yes. See what kind of turn he can make. So the Merciful Retribution is going to stay. This has been a good game between these two. Fano going wide every turn that he can, really showing you how to win this matchup. And then Michael really been up to the task of cleaning this up, but he's just been so far behind on life that all these attacks represent such a big portion of his life total now. Yeah, and, and note as we see this Herald attack, that's been such a small portion of Fano's offense to this point. It really hasn't been about Heralds. And, and again, when we saw other Prism decks that didn't do quite as well in the feature match area, they had to go to that Herald plan very, very early on. It's just not what you want to be doing. Like, it's a good backup. You're happy to have it. But you'd so much rather get wide with these auras. Yeah, it looks like we got a double block from hand. This, the, the Silvers is going to attack for two here. It's going to pump itself. You're going to have the Merciful Retribution behind. Love putting the counter where he put it here because, like, if you attack this one, you're still taking the one. The Retribution is still here. You're still going to get that arcane damage in here. Definitely right. diversifying of threats here from Fano. Yeah. All right, here we go. The Time Skipper's activation. We've got two action points now. Looks like an attack from the Hammer. Going to go ahead and take care of that. It's going to go into the soul. Last card is going to be Lightning Surge. 
Yeah, Make sure that we can get that attack in. Michael has, again, cleaned things up very nicely. Here's the problem. Not really going anywhere. Only done eight damage over the course of the game. Needs to find a way to start turning it in his favor. And, look, I just applauded the decision to leave Awakening out of the deck. I, I get what Michael's going for. But that's one of your big catch-up mechanisms. So Michael has to put things together a little bit more naturally with the way his deck is set up. Where is the big swing going to come from? It's got to be something like... Uh, an Oaken Old. It's got to be something like a Spinal Crush. It's got to be a Crippling Crush. One of these cards has to hit for big value for Michael Hamilton to go ahead and seize the initiative. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Fatal Black getting the initiative back just a little bit here. With a Prismatic Shield, he's going to be attacking for three here. Michael Hamilton, how are you going to take this? You're at seven. That's almost half your life total here. You've got a Shield. You've got Crater Fist, but blocking ones feels so bad. Looks like it is going to block with Winter's Bite. Looks like he's going to take just a little bit of damage here, down to five. Comes back over to Michael Hamilton. Does he have another big turn here? He's got to start turning things around soon. Absolutely. Just Winner's Whale on the attack. I, I don't like where that leaves Michael. There's a good chance that these Spectral Shields are going to be able to be defended by Fano. Unless we have something like a Blink to get another action point, this could be a real trouble point for Michael Hamilton. And Tannen, I, I got to say... We talked about it all day. I'm, I'm just converted. I, I'm a Rampart of the Ram's Head in the vast majority of matchups at this point. I think it would have been markedly better than Stalagmite here. Oh, I think I've been converted as well. Um, it would have saved so much extra damage here this game. There's been some floating resources here or there. And, will, and those Frostbite, well, the one Frostbite made just has not mattered yet. So. Right. As I say, uh, we've seen some situations where Rampart has definitely looked infinitely better because of the fact that people have been playing around the uh, Frostbite from the shield, the Ice Shield, so much today. I will say the Ice Shield can definitely win some games in spots that the Ram's Head never would, but like you, I feel like it's just been better in more spots today. When I actually loved the Ice Shield through my pro quest, I thought it was the superior shield for quite a while, and I'm starting to change my mind. Well, sign of a good player is one that updates their expectations all the time. Flattery will get you everywhere, Brian. Please I know. keep it coming. Keep I it know. Coming. So one of these Spectral Shields is going to get seized. So one of those is prevented. Looks like the Shield's going to get in and block another one. Looks like we're going to have a pitch here to be able to attack more. Yep. Michael Hamilton really incentivized to attack for as much as possible every turn here. Yes. Two, two resources left over here. Yeah, uh, again, ten, uh, that Frostbite was basically meaningless. I, I just don't think it influenced this turn all that much. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm starting to just fully agree with you here. And here we got a huge attack. Yeah, Mirage and Metamorph for the follow-up. See a shake of the head from Michael there. Things are starting to go south very quickly. Yeah, he might be able to block and pop this, but that's going to leave behind an extra Spectre Shield here, which gets to attack. I assume that's what's happening now. I think the players are just telling each other, hey, I'm attacking you with the, 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 the extra Spectre Shield that I have now. This is the beginning of the end when you're the Bravo player. Yeah, starting to snowball. Yeah, when you're having to block with cards from hand on one attacks, this is not where you want to be. Is there any way for Michael to get out of this? Is there any big attack left over that can kind of start swinging things in his favor? I think it would just take some kind of awakening turn, really, and that's not in Michael's deck. So I, you know, anything's possible with Starvo. You just hit a bunch of really good uh, fuses in a row and are able to pump out massive disruptive attacks. Anything's possible, but... Michael's basically going to have to run hotter than the sun. Maybe this Channel Lake Frigid can buy a little bit of time. That's a very strong card against Prism. So maybe pumping the brakes a little bit on Fano, but no question Fano completely in the driver's seat. It's going to look like he's going to make a resource here in response to the Channel Lake Frigid. It's like Versal Retribution is going to get played, and then that could be a yeah, block. That, that could game. just do it, and yep. that is going to go ahead and get the fist bump for Fano Black. 7-0. Yeah. With Through Prism. day one. Yeah, Prism looking.